everyone, welcome back to another video. It is Francesco here. Welcome to the Geek Productive YouTube channel. If you're brand new and if you're a regular, welcome back. So today's feature, by the look of this book pile next to me, will be a book review video. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this feature. This is gonna be quite a long one, so uh, you can always skip to the timestamps below for the book recommendations that I'll put there. So guys, just before we jump in, if you haven't yet reviewed my iTunes podcast, I'd be absolutely honored at it. You can win in the giveaway that will be in the description below, or uh, if you're just generous and kind and loving, you can give some feedback on an iTunes review. Anyway guys, let's get stuck into this book review. Uh, I wanted to start with books that I used to read. So the books I used to read when I was younger were a lot uh, around fiction. Um, I read a lot of fiction uh, around Dan Brown, um, and some of those sorts of books and I really did stick to that sort of genre crime and sort of mystery in a sense and I didn't really come out of that mainly because um, I was in like a, a sort of like I love the fiction but now when I think I was like 15 or 16 I jumped straight into non-fiction and I started really with this first book. Now it didn't look like this when I was younger. Um, this is a more uh, updated version, the 2015 edition. Um, but I actually read this book, um, I believe it was on uh, Google Books first. And the book is Getting Things Done by David Allen. Now I recommend this book mainly for people who are looking to implement a process um, with their productivity. Um, a lot of the time when I recommend apps here on the channel, I'm recommending apps because I assume that you know the frameworks of productivity. And um, this really did help me, especially because when I first read the book, it was a framework. It was a five step framework that I would go through um, to clearing out most of my processes. And the reason I started doing uh, this sort of thing is because I was failing in school and this book actually did help me to set sort of this uh, routine into schedule and sort of get organized and get working on stuff. The great thing this really this book really helped with was the scaling abilities of it. So when I read it, I was obviously not doing well in school um, and when I read it after that, I got into this sort of like, uh, will I could apply it to the next year and the next year and the next year, whatever I was doing, at university and then freelancing, I was applying it to all the different situations. So I would highly recommend reading, reading David Allen's uh, Getting Things Done. Now during this period of time, I also read another book called How to Be a Productivity Ninja. And I believe I read it maybe a couple of years, maybe two or three years after it. But it was a nice addition um, to the sort of productivity genre. Um, this sort of helped with more practical advice. So whereas GTD was more like, for example, um, GTD would help with a framework, like I can apply it to a lot of different things. This helped with information overload and more of like a email um, project managers, task managers process, which was quite nice. Um, so this book's been written by Graham Alcott and he has a company called Think Productive, not Keep Productive, uh, but I highly recommend reading it. It's definitely one of my recommended reads. Now, after that, I sort of had a bit of a break with my reading. Um, I didn't really read for the first year or so of university necessarily, uh, but I did read a couple of useful things. Just before university started, I actually read The 4-Hour Work Week, which is written by Tim Ferriss and is probably one of my favorite books of all time. Now, I really liked this book at the time because when I got to that stage of my life, I was looking for more effective ways to do things and having that initial uh, step with GTD and the, the Ninja book <laughs> really did help, but when I had to put it into context of my mission, I guess, to run businesses or, or work for myself or own my own time. I put it into context with the four hour work week and during university, it gave me a lot of time to ponder at definitely a lot of those lessons in the book. Now, one of the lessons in the book that I think really did help while I was at university was the talk of time. Now, um, I think it's an important subject time because a lot of time when you're a student, there's an association that you need to work in the library for like hours and hours, and you almost like get this credit, uh, like, oh, I was in the library for all hours. And having that mentality when you go into life is not the right sort of thing. When you go into the world of work, what I mean is, um, it's not the right attitude to have. It's definitely not the right attitude to have. And the book actually helped me to think 
around this topic is to go, do I need to be spending that much time in library? Where can I apply my time elsewhere? And that's help, what helped me start the YouTube channel, what helped me do freelancing, and what helped me do placement, and, uh, and sort of like, I guess, out of activities that not many other students were doing to some extent. Now, also during this time, I read Walter Isaacson's Steve Jobs book, which was a very good read. And it, although obviously Steve Jobs was a very particular character, this actually really did help me to put into perspective the way that he thought about things and the way that he approached things. Now, one of my missions is to start a, a suite of productivity apps, as I've mentioned to you guys a few times, but with the way that Steve Jobs has done things, uh, he's really been able to merge design with business, profitability with the design focused stuff. And that I know is gonna help me. So when I was reading the book, obviously he made a lot of mistakes, but I learned from all of those mistakes in that book, I feel. During this time as well, I also read Senna. Uh, Senna was one of my favorite F1 racing drivers. Uh, he was really, uh, I guess, like a thinker in the space. He wasn't just thinking about F1 racing, he was thinking more about life and how uh, you should approach life. He was uh, very much someone who believed in God, but after uh, reading the book, um, the autobiography, I think not the autobiography, the biography, um, I can't remember who the author is, but I'll include it in the description below. I really did get uh, a, an idea that um, Senna himself n sort of knew the importance of life. And what was creepy, well not creepy, but just very haunting in a sense, is that when he like was doing um, the San Marino track, when he sadly died um, in 1994, he actually went to see uh, some of his enemies, not enemies, but rivals in the space to talk to them before he actually, um, you know, the weekend started, which was quite weird. So he was, it was almost not in a sense like the way that he was talking, he sort of like, it was almost like he knew that he was going to pass, but the way that he thinks about certain things and the way that he reacted uh, with certain people was absolutely amazing and I think his character is something that I definitely learned from in the book. One other book I read was called Crush It um, and at the time uh, I think I was, I think it was 2013 or 12, I can't really remember, but it was a very impressionable book on me, uh, mainly because it didn't really talk necessarily about starting a business, but starting content and starting your own thing. Now there's a lot of pressure I think in, especially my generation, uh, I'm like 23 and that sort of like age group when they're in a focus on starting a startup it's all about like I need to do this I need to be the business owner I need to do this certain go through these certain like uh, you know holes to get to the the end goal and I think that sometimes can be damaging uh, but when I read crush it it sort of gave me a different perspective on that uh, and the fact that you can create your own content you can create your own thing but it doesn't necessarily have to be that big startup at the end um, so it sort of gave me a bit of confidence to do this and also work outside of uh, my remit as a student. Now, some of the reference book that I do did like um, is the books by Tim Ferriss, Tribe of Mentors. A very good book, um, more of a sort of Bible in a sense uh, that I found very useful. And the other one is How to Stay Alive by Bear Grylls. Now, this one is very much the title. Uh, there are different scenarios, like for example, what happens if you jump out of parachute? What happens if you jump if, if there's like an attack on like a coffee shop or whatever, wherever you are? Um, but it actually did help with sort of like thinking quite literally about how to su survive certain situations. Uh, and that can be useful, especially um, uh, if something bad happens suddenly. Um, so for example, like fire, uh, they recommend that you go uh, and obviously shut the room that you're in because that will give you a bit of time. But if the worst case scenario happens and you need to completely get out is to get as many like clothes on as possible, wet them like as much as you can uh, and just sort of get out of there as fast as you can. Obviously there's more detail to it and don't take that advice as like legal advice or anything. But uh, there are so many great tips in this book. Uh, and I do really like Bear Grylls writing style. I read a lot of his previous books um, and I found them very useful. So another book that I read that uh, Alex recommended me and I got to finish it, I think it was over a three to four month span, uh, is Lynchpin. Um, it's by Seth Godin. 
uh, and it was a great book to finish university with. Uh, the book itself actually dives into how you can break away from having a traditional career in a sense. It's not cliche, it's more like breaking away from the, the mentality of certain realities. Uh, I think it's like almost in a sense of you have to make yourself indispensable in some sense. That's what a linchpin is and how you can really make an amazing career. So um, that was a really good read. Um, I actually found it incredibly useful, uh, Seth Godin's linchpin. So skipping forward to now, I'm reading quite a few books at the moment, uh, some audiobooks and also some uh, personal books as well. Sapiens uh, is one of them, Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. Harari. Um, but this book is so good so far. I'm not finished it yet. I am nowhere near finishing it. I'm only just about approaching halfway. But it's an incredible book so far and I'm slowly reading this one so that I can take it all in. <laughs> or I'm just a sucky reader. Uh, but it's a great book about the sort of human evolution and how we got to where we are today. Now just to follow up, there is a separate book called Homo Deus written by the same author and it's more about tomorrow the history of uh, the future. And this is my book to read this year. I am not gonna finish this year without reading it. Uh, call me, uh, be accountable to that. Um, a Brief History of Tomorrow, it's called, um, but it dives into the likes of AI and uh, interests around that. <clears throat> so I also have a book called, I think I've mentioned it before, um, Leonardo da Vinci's Walter Isaac. Whoa. God damn it. At the moment, I'm also reading uh, Leonardo da Vinci's Walter, uh, biography by Walter Isaacson. I'm not too far into it at the moment, uh, probably like uh, a slither, but I'm finding it very, very interesting. It's quite an expensive book, uh, like 20 quid or something like that. Uh, it was an investment and I did enjoy Steve uh, Jobs' one, but I want to know how a designer specifically thought, um, and especially such a one that was able to blend design and science at the same time. I think that's something that I'm really interested in. Uh, it's something, one of the reasons why I'm so interested in like SpaceX and Elon Musk and things like that. Loosely, I'm using this book at the moment, The Daily Stoic Journal um, for writing and reflection. Essentially, you write sort of like a, a morning reflection piece every morning that's based around a stoic um, conversation uh, or learning. And it's quite interesting. Now, I, as I said, I'm using this very loosely. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm reading a lot of things slowly. So I'm not, it might look like quite a lot, but it's not really that much. Other books I'm reading is Churchill Effect. Um, this is one about uh, Winston Churchill, the UK or the Br Great Britain's sort of wartime leader, prime minister at the time. It's a really great book written by Boris Johnson, who's a sort of controversial political character at the moment in the UK. But it's quite an interesting book so far about how he was able to take the leadership reins at the time and be able to sort of win the war to some extent. Now, one of the most controversial books I'm reading at the moment, I guess, controversial, 12 Rules of Life by uh, Jordan P. Peterson. Now, you may have heard of Jordan P. Peterson. In the news, he's been sort of a bit of a controversial character, sort of, uh, and, and some of the sort of talks uh, he does go into a very high level of detail. But I really do like his book and hit some of his seminars that he talks about, especially because he talks a lot about um, sort of uh, the conversation about uh, individual male individuals that are suffering in workplace environments. Um, and I quite like this conversation because I guess to some extent, this channel is orientated around helping uh, you to take control. Uh, and I think that's a very important topic, uh, especially if this is in a, 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 an epidemic, especially mental health and, and men at the moment. Uh, I don't wanna go too much into this at all, but the book is very interesting so far. Uh, he goes into different rules for life, um, 12 to be specific. Uh, and it covers topics from parenting all the way over to um, how you approach uh, certain situations. And it brings it back to really nice uh, like little stories. So the book is very good. I'm listening to the audiobook version at the moment and narrated by Jordan P. Peterson too. Uh, but in a moment, it's very, very interesting. And again, as I said, I'm not a political, I'm n no way interested in the sort of political characters in to some extent, but I like, uh, the sort of approach that he takes on the book. So books I want to read, I have on my Audible uh, the book Gut, which is all about uh, the gut biome and how that works. I also have Ego is an Enemy uh, by Ryan Holiday. He also was the guy who wrote this Daily Stoic book, 
so I'm keeping it that theme, but all about how you can avoid, I guess, an ego, because I think that's something that I'm learning a lot about now. The other books I'd like to read are Elon Musk's book. Um, it's a biography, but it's about how he's been able to approach stuff. Why We Sleep, um, I'll include the authors and information below as well. And just for the fun of it, I wouldn't mind reading Fire and Fury as well, um, although it's not the top of my list. Anyway guys, uh, I hoped that you did enjoy my book review. Again, super duper long and I can see the thing flashing 17 and a half minutes and it's probably going to run out of battery in a minute or space. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this feature. I'll include all of the book recommendations in the description below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to have a great week, keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers. <laughs>